Welcome to FMSQ's Enduro Cross Country Races in Rivière Rouge, Quebec. This is race five out of an eight round series. We are in Saint Véronique, two and a half hours north of Montreal, held August 3rd and 4th in 2019. What a great weekend to be out here. Cool nights, sunny days, with highs of 28 degrees. I can't think of a better place to be at the moment. Here's a look at lap two, a pro race from an official's perspective, giving you insight of the course and how amazing these athletes really are. Yeah, well, here we are on the sandy track in super dry and dusty conditions. I'm having troubles with traction and my front tire is sliding around all over the place. I guess getting used to the soil is all a part of the challenge. And the challenge it is. These corners can get pretty tricky. The sand is deep and super soft. So if you're not used to this kind of stuff, it can get quite unpredictable. Well, it may be unpredictable for most, but these pros have it down pat. Their times are incredibly consistent. And I'm talking nine laps over two and a half hours of racing. Incredible. That is incredible. These racers are fast. On this track, momentum is your friend. Slowing down is unforgiving. It'll make you flop around like a beach whale or some sort of aquatic animal in the desert. All these trailers and campers and spectators in this whoops section was getting me a little nervous. I didn't want to wipe out in front of them and look like an amateur after these pros. But I am an amateur, I guess. I don't know, it seems to me like things are holding up pretty good for you. Yeah, I felt a lot better in these wooded single track sections. The dirt had a good density. I was able to maintain a good float and build up some speed. But I still got a long way to go to keep up with these top tier riders. You won't get an argument from me. The 10 a.m. race featured the Pro Women's Division. Another amazing class to watch. Catherine Desrochers, number 254, finished in first, with Sophie Wallet Caron, number 772, in second, and Marika Hamel, number 821, in third. Here I am crossing a road. The municipality was kind enough to block the whole road during the weekend. Oh, I think I stalled it there. <laughs> Clutch control in these tight corners must get difficult at times. When in doubt, throttle out, said the amateur with the GoPro. <laughs> these wooded parts of the track were my favorite sections. They were flowy, twisty, and once I got used to braking a little more with the rear brake, I was able to keep a better speed, but still nowhere near the pace of these other guys. Listen to this stat. First place, Alex Goujon averaged 36.2 kilometers an hour. Oh, I'm just trying to get out of the way not to slow anybody down. I am nowhere near on their level. These guys make it look so easy. I can only assume this is where technique and experience come into play. Most definitely. Watching these guys go was an awesome experience. Where they throttle, where they break, and realizing that we have a lot to learn. This entire series has been tight amongst the top contenders. After five races, Philippe Chienet holds top spot with 112 points. Seven points behind in second is Alec Sounds Bouchon. Winning this last race was good for his standing. So this is for anyone, really. In third, Jake Michaud with 101 points. Add Loic Lenard to the mix and anything could happen over the next final three races of the series. Just trying to keep up with these guys is a workout. I can only imagine how difficult this really is. These are athletes. Good one. I guess I wasn't going fast enough. Speed, momentum is your friend. Get on the throttle, buddy. Ha <laughs> ha! It seems the faster you go, the easier it is. Till you hit a tree, I guess. No, sir, that would not be good. We do have medics on site. Shout out to Marc-André and the entire medic team. 
I'm happy to report there were no major accidents this weekend. Some places are pretty damn tight. If you didn't have any handguards or bark busters, you'd probably have sore knuckles at the end of the race. Wrap around handguards certainly come in handy, along with a whole array of other protective equipment. Even UFC fighters wear jock straps. Whoa, almost wiped out there. Don't be afraid, homie. Last thing I wanted to do is fall over and block the track for the racers behind me. So I would slow down and try to be cautious. But like I said before, speed is your friend. That doesn't seem to be an issue with these top level riders. I keep looking over my shoulder, thinking there's somebody behind me. But what I should really be doing is concentrating in front and not hitting one of these damn trees. But then again, these pros are like ghosts. They keep popping out of nowhere. Let's see how long I can follow this guy. Good luck catching him. He's gone. Damn, I lost him already. Kilometer three. Seven more to go. Man, this is fun. Just imagine how much more fun it would be to be in the race. If I want to race, I really gotta practice on my tight turns. They slow me down and I lose so much speed. The speed and consistency in some of these pros is incredible. First place went to Alex Goujon, who averaged 17 minutes and 5 seconds per lap. He also held the fastest lap amongst all racers, with 16 minutes and 30 seconds. Not too far behind him in second place was Loic Lenard, with an average of 17 minutes and 24 seconds, followed by Philippe Chenet in third with 17 minutes and 37 seconds. That's close to two and a half hours, nine laps, with no more than a 70 second variance between laps. Amazing. Getting better in the whoop sections. I think I wiped out huge here in the first lap. I didn't capture it on the GoPro, but oh well, maybe next time. Man, that camera must get beat up. I'd love to see the blooper footage. Doing pretty good in these corners. Gets a little easier once it gets rutted out. For me, anyway. A quick shout out to Justin Brazo for winning first in the Pro Am races. Congratulations. I keep hearing things. I gotta stop looking behind me, because these corners come up fast. You seem to be keeping good pace, but these guys are so fast. It's no wonder you're hearing footsteps. One minute it's clear, the next they're passing you and it's gone. Gotta get out of the way and let these guys go by. Don't want to be slowing anybody down. Check out this dust. My air filter must be packed. And I didn't bring a spare one. Next time, can't forget that. Jake Michaud may have ran into the exact problem. He was leading the race until the end of the 8th lap where he encountered mechanical issues. This may have cost him the lead, and with that, a 2 point difference in the entire series, instead of 11 points. This must be a very frustrating, yet very real, part of racing. I almost wipe out here, and another pro ghost rider sneaks up behind me. This series is tight. After this race finished, Philippe Chenet leads the series five races in with a total of 112 points. In second is Alexandre Goujon with 105, and in third, Jake Michaud with 101. Everything looks so smooth on the GoPro footage. But let me tell ya, there's lots of holes and ruts all over the place. I think my arms are burning here. Can't stop now. Squeeze your bike with your legs. That's what I keep telling myself. 
Arm pump is a real thing. The technique these racers have, the awareness they need, the strength and endurance they apply is admirable, to say the least. Hats off to all the participants. Shout out to Gishiru for winning first place in the senior class. Congratulations. Oh, almost got off track there. When in doubt, throttle out. Hey, that's my line. Ha <laughs> ha. Yep, well that was a cool section. Here we are crossing back over the road getting into these corners and we're gonna hit a sandy whoop straight away I think I can hear a few more riders behind me I'll just move over to the left there you go one two all right let's try to imitate these guys and see what happens a little bit of break throttle another bit of throttle again pick up some speed and damn, they're gone already. Even some more dust packing up that air filter. Look in front, buddy. Here come some more trees. You don't want to be crashing in this area. The amount of participants in this one o'clock race alone is amazing. There were over 95 in total. 19 pros, 17 pro-ams, 10 senior, 22 juniors, 11 in the 40 plus, and 16 in the 30 plus. But beyond that, participants totaled over 500 during the entire weekend, splitting between the quads on Saturday and the bikes on Sunday. Respect to you all. Watch how slow I take this turn. I gotta be working on my cornering. Five kilometers to go. Man, this is fun. Another shout out goes to Brian Brokart for winning the 30 plus class. Congratulations. In this area, the sand was super deep. I took a huge spill on day one when we were marking up the track. Good thing the sand was soft. And this whoop section is quite tricky because you think you can take up some speed. Then there's a corner here at the end and a bunch of concrete blocks. What the heck? That could be a hazard. Here I am going way too slow in this corner, which makes my front end dig in and lose a bunch of traction. Man, I suck sometimes. For more stats and standings, or for any information regarding these up and coming events, look up fmsq.net. Become a member and join the group. You can also check them out on Facebook at FMSQ. That was kind of tricky. Leading the overall series in the women's pro class, in first is Catherine Desrochers, followed by Christelle Rabichaud in second place, and Marika Hamel in third. I think I was getting a little tired here. Missed my shift, slowing down in the corners, but man, this is what I signed up for. We're happy to have guys like you sweeping out there. Making sure everything is in order, keeping the riders safe. Now get out the way. Here comes one of those ghosts, whizzing right by me, throwing me a little dust. A shout out to the other two sweepers out there this weekend. Thanks a lot to Malk and Nico. Just getting out of the way for two more riders here. Check out this pass. Nice move, buddy. I wish I can corner like that. This course looks pretty sandy out there. From what I heard, the next course may be just as sandy, if not more. The race will be held at saint michel des saint on August 17th and 18th, 2019. Registration open August 12th at LiveLabs.com. I don't know why I'm going so damn slow here. A nice little straightaway with no obstacles, except for this little mound here. I should have just opened up the throttle and tried to catch up to these guys. But I didn't. Shout out to Greg Colvert for winning the Quad Pro Class race on Saturday with an average speed of 34 kilometers an hour. 
Still going slow. I guess I need to work on my cardio or something. Maybe that's why they call it enduro racing. Yes, enduro for endurance. There goes my buddy Etienne Pimal passing me on his Honda CRF 250. Yes, sir. Etienne Pimal is a junior racer who is also part of the FMSQ race setup team. There's a lot that goes into these races, and none of it is possible without the help of an entire setup crew. They did a great job. Here he is again, rehydrating. Let's see how long it takes for him to pass me again. His average speed was 29.5 kilometers an hour. He's gonna catch up to you in no time. So this section here, we use up a little part of the MX track. Gives us a chance to rest up our arms here. And uh, oh, there he goes. Caught up to me and passed me like a bullet. Man, he's fast. Shout out to Ben Coleman for winning first place in the entire junior class. Congratulations. Oh, here comes up two more guys. Throwing me some dust. Going through these sandy whoops. Speed, man, speed. I go way too slow. Watch this. I have a hard time just going up this little crappy little dinky hill here. My front wheel is flopping around all over the place. Another shout out to Maria Bude who won the women's pro quad on Saturday, August 3rd. Congratulations. Still too slow. Throttle out, buddy. Let's see this turn here. Well, there you go. That was a little bit better, but still. Round 7 takes place in Castlemont, Ontario. That's just south of Ottawa on September 7th and 8th. So be sure to register online at livelaps.com. Let's see if I can follow this guy. What makes these courses so amazing and challenging is the variation in the terrain. Preferences play a part. I felt a lot more comfortable in this single track stuff. I really gotta practice in the sand. Those are some of the challenges in racing. Sand, rock, mud, grass, you name it, you got it. I think I just passed another sweeper. I think he was having a hard time in the sand too. It's crazy how many laps sweepers get in over a weekend. They're on the track every race and can do over 20 laps. In fact, Nico put on 210 kilometers this weekend alone. I thought I was catching up to the guy in front of me when I was seeing this dust, but no, not even close. I see him over there. There you go, that was a good corner. Let's see if I can get this one down too. Not bad, not bad. Getting there. Third time's the charm. Yeah, that was pretty good. But there's some more guys catching up again. I'll just pull over here and watch them wing by. Staying out of the way seems like quite the task. Yet, an important part of being a sweeper. Yes, sir, my buddy Pascal Primal, number 419. That's uh, Etienne Primal's dad. I think he got first place in the 40 year old and over. Good job, buddy. Pascal Primal got first place in the 40 plus class with an average speed of 28.3 kilometers an hour and a best lap of 21 minutes and 10 seconds. Now, let's see if I can keep up. He got me motivated, but all I can do is eat his dust. But at least uh, we get back into this wooded area. Kilometer number eight, two more to go. How do you guys navigate through these trees? I'd definitely be lost in no time at all, or knee deep in the bush, no doubt. 
The course was super well marked out. You always knew where to go. Just follow the arrows, stay on track and avoid those trees. No confusion at all. The last and final round of the FMSQ series is coming. The dates are set for September 28th and 29th, 2019 in saint de beauce Mark it in your calendar, this should be a good one. This is a new track for FMSQ, and we are excited to bring you video and commentary once again. So make sure to register on LiveLabs.com and join the fun. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, right on. Oh, some dust up here in front of me. I must be catching up to somebody. Oh, I must be just getting my hopes up again. I'd like to thank La Nechalina for sponsoring this video. Vive l'expérience. Go check them out online for all your pet's needs. Online orders and local deliveries are free with any purchase over $60. That's lanechaluna.com. I gotta say, their physical location in saint Henri is absolutely amazing. You gotta go check it out when you're in that area. They got an amazing mascot, Luna, who's absolutely beautiful. Their staff is knowledgeable, they're incredibly friendly. The owner, Rachel, is incredibly amazing. Once again, you gotta check it out at LaNichelleUnum.com. It's also family owned and operated, and they usually deliver within 24 hours. We also forgot to mention that the winner for the whole shot was Jake Michaud. Congratulations! Oh, a little wobble there, but man I love these wooded areas. This KTM XCW250 really soaks up the bumps, the power is always there and the ergonomics are second to none. What a great bike to ride! I could imagine how specific bikes for specific tasks really go a long way. You really see that in this terrain. KTM seems to be predominant in these types of races. They added these two little sections for the pro class, which uh, I don't know why because they weren't too difficult at all. The course changes throughout the day depending on skill levels and race class. They do this by blocking paths and rerouting specific trails, imposing difficulty. Obviously the quads can't go everywhere bikes can, but they do have it all planned out and marked as it goes. Shout out to William Kreit for winning first place in the sportsman class. Congratulations! Well, that was the last of the wooded sections. After this tight corner, we encounter some loose sand, a few whoops, and a small little jump, having trouble getting some traction. The right tire in, in these cross-country enduro races is always a difficult choice. This part here I found was quite fun. Too bad there wasn't more of this kind of stuff. Another girl was passing right by me. Oh, he made that look easy. There is definitely nothing easy about it. You have to admire their strength, endurance, and determination. I'll just pull over here and rest up, let the dust settle, and watch these guys do their thing. From this corner on, the rest of the race was on the MX motocross track. They had a super nice setup with sprinklers all along the track to keep the dust down. You know, it's amazing what goes into these kinds of things. These run-ups were super intimidating. I couldn't see the other side, so I would let off the gas and just roll over the jumps. We're coming up to the pro pit stop here. This is where they gas up, 
rehydrate, and do what needs to be done for maintenance, making sure they can get through their nine laps in this race. Nice little straightaway to get some speed. Get into this high burn. Oh, a little bit of clutch. That was too much of a high gear. Probably actually a good thing. I'm really looking forward to the next round's race. I love how tight the standings are between the pros within the MFSQ series. You never know who may come ahead, as it sometimes comes down to mere seconds. June 29th's Canelli Motocross race was incredible. The entire race came down to 17 seconds. That's over two and a half hours all coming down to 17 seconds. Incredible. These berms were so much fun. Lots of traction and you would come out of them with good speed. Last turn before the final jumps. The first jump is a single. Then I let off the throttle. But the pros would hit this double with ease. Coming to the final section. A small zigzag to slow us down before passing through the scanner. The sand was super silty and slick here. The scanner reads your number, your lap time, and your position in the race. This all gets uploaded to LiveLaps.com. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to round six coming August 17th and 18th, where we will show you the track, stats, and the latest insights on the FMSQ series. Be sure to subscribe right here, right arm.